Um, you know, we've had a lot of agitation in the markets based on what's been going on globally and in a macro basis with the Fed, with the U.K. Uh, bond market earthquake. Even today, uh, Japanese yen was at a 30-year high or so. Uh, Bank of Japan intervened, actually tried to, 30-year uh, uh, low, tried to strengthen the yen against the dollar. Um, how does that all filter into uh, to what an investor should be thinking about here in terms of where markets finish out the year? Well, Mike, it's harder than ever, but my job is to remind investors to think about the longer term. And while we're seeing very significant volatility and we could see some earnings misses, after all, only about 20 percent of the S&P 500 companies have reported thus far, um, what we need to think about if we have a long time horizon is that these represent opportunities. And it's hard to do, um, but in fact, there can be even greater opportunities when we see the kind of frightening headlines and, and extreme volatility that we've seen in both the stock market and the bond market. Well, that's certainly true. I, I suppose on a longer term basis, uh, you know, the, the, the risk comes out of the market to a degree as, as, as prices and valuations come down, Christina, although I do wonder if, if enough has been done, uh, just given our starting point uh, and the fact that both stocks and bonds have, have gone down so much in sync. Uh, how does that leave an investor to try to decide uh, if it's yet safe uh, to try and increase exposures? Well, it is very, very hard for humans to pinpoint exactly when to get in. We'll never know the optimal time until it's in our rearview mirror. But what we can do is start to dollar cost average in, recognizing that certainly valuations are more attractive, uh, especially in some parts of the market than others, um, but that in general, um, this is a better looking market than it was last year. Now, we have to recognize that the Fed is going to still be a key driver going forward, and we don't know exactly what the Fed is going to do because we don't know what the data is going to tell the Fed to do. Um, but having said that, um, we can start to move in, start to uh, acquire um, greater exposure to areas like equities and fixed income, um, and perhaps um, enjoy some of the things that have happened this year, like higher yields for, for fixed income. So it's not easy to do, but for the longer term, it can be a, a you know, pay off uh, in, in a very, very impressive way. Charlie, um, as you look around as a, a value-oriented investor, uh, have, have any particular types of stocks or stocks from any particular industry started to surface more than others uh, as you're looking for what's been uh, kind of unduly cheapened by this move down in the markets? Absolutely. Anything economically sensitive, and that's a quick answer, an obvious answer, but a true answer, particularly anything having to do with housing has gotten extremely cheap. So we're finding names like Mohawk carpeting and floors that's trading at seven times earnings, Borg Warner that makes powertrains for cars trading at seven times earnings, anything that's economically sensitive. Right now, people are petrified of a recession. I'm not denying that one might come, but we're going to get to the other side of it. And when we do, these are good companies that are going to go back to normal earnings, and they are right now very economically sensitive and very cheap. Yeah, uh, absolutely do. Uh, Christina, in terms of uh, whether you should be on the more defensive side of things uh, as you perhaps wade back into equities or, or look to buy or, or just, you know, essentially look at the most beaten down or most cyclical names, like Charlie was saying, what makes more sense here? Well, if you're going to be tactical, I think you want to be more defensive in the shorter term. And there are actually some, some great opportunities that are going to present themselves, especially in the tech space, which is arguably a more defensive part of the stock market these days. Um, but of course, um, we're going to see the economy start to recover, and the stock market is likely to discount that in advance. Um, so investors should be open to also starting to add to economically cyclical names in coming months. Um, but the name of the game right now is more defensive. Gotcha, Christina. Appreciate your time today. Christina Hooper.